Hi there, it's Amanda. Today we're going to take a look at the Google Chrome extension called Loom. Loom is a screen recorder that allows you to record your screen, voice, and or webcam, and then share that out with others. The awesome thing about Loom is that once you have a verified teacher account, you get the pro version for free, which means no watermarking, unlimited recordings, and some of the other advanced features, which is fantastic. So today we're gonna to talk about a few things. The first thing is how to get logged in with Loom, see if you're on the premium account. Then we'll go in how to use some of the features in Loom to record, and then how to make some changes to your video and share it out. At the end, we'll cover some best practices when using a screen recorder. So to start out, let's talk about how you get Loom for Chrome if you don't have it already. I'm in the Chrome web store here, so I'm at chrome.google.com, and then I just searched up here for Loom. You'll see that I already have it added. If you don't already have it added, you'll have a button that says Add to Chrome, and you're going to want to click it. Once you click this button for the first time, you will be asked to sign in. In my district, we sign in with Google. Once you sign in, it's also going to ask you to get, give permission for Loom to access your webcam and or uh, microphone, so make sure you do that. And then you're going to want to identify yourself as a teacher. That way it can verify your account and get you moved into that pro account for free. Now, if you're a person like me that already has Loom installed, let's go ahead and jump over to loom.com. And I wanna show you how you can make sure that you have the pro teacher account for free. So what you can do is once you're logged in here, I'm at loom.com. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna click on my icon. So at the top right corner, and then I'm gonna go to account settings. And under account settings, I'm gonna scroll down to my plan on the left-hand side here and click it. And then here you'll notice it says that I have the Loom Pro free for education. Now, if you don't have this and you've already signed into Loom and haven't identified yourself as a teacher, check in the description on this video for a link to fill out a form to get you pushed into that Pro account for free. Now that we've talked about how to sign in to Loom, let's talk about how to record with Loom. So I'm gonna jump over to a note sheet here and let's say that I'm gonna go through this with some teachers or students. So I wanna record my screen and my webcam and my voice so I can make a nice little video. So now that my extension is installed, okay, and I'm in, logged into Chrome here, so in the top right hand corner I see my icon, um, as my user here for my district, which means I also have all of my extensions up here. If you don't see your Loom extension, new to Google Chrome is this little extension um, puzzle piece button. And what you do when you click that, it just lets you pin and unpin extensions that you wanna see up here on the left. So you're going to wanna make sure that Loom is pinned there so you can easily find it. And Loom is the little rose colored looking icon like you see here. Now we're ready to press our Loom recording icon, our extension, so we can set up our recording. So when I click the rose colored extension, that Loom extension, it's gonna ask me to set my settings for this recording. I have three options. I can record my screen and my camera, I can record my screen only, or I can record my camera only. And it's just gonna depend on what you do. Almost all of the time I'm recording, I'm doing my screen and camera, knowing that I can turn my camera on and off during the recording and move my camera around as needed. Screen just means it's just gonna be your screen. Now you'll notice I have my little icon showing up here. I can actually turn that off or leave it on as well. And then if I just need to record a video message, I can do camera only. So moving back to screen and camera. With screen and camera, I have two options. I can record my full desktop or I can re record my current tab. Full desktop means anywhere I go um, on my computer, it's going to record. So I don't have to stay on this tab. I use this one often if I know that I may need to bounce out and show another resource. If I'm sure I'm just going to stay on this one tab, then I'll choose current tab. So if I'm on current tab, even if I jump over to another tab or another screen, it's going to continue to record that one tab. So I'm gonna do go ahead and do screen and cap cam full desktop you'll see that my microphone audio is being picked up because we see this little wave here we can turn that on and off and then if we go to show advanced options we have some more options here the first one is where are you you pulling your camera from some teachers may have a webcam plugged in so they want to use that external webcam you should see that listed there if you use your drop down or you can choose your internal webcam 
Same thing with microphone. I have a lapel mic plugged in, so I'm using my external microphone, but you may choose to use the one built into your computer as well. This little flip camera button here doesn't seem so ooh, important, but it is when you are reading text to students or holding up a book. So you wanna make sure that students are seeing that in the correct way. So you want that set up ahead of time. Then down here at the bottom, the use the photo for screen only would mean that when I'm on that screen only tab, if I want my icon to show up and kind of glow as I'm talking, I can have that on or off. We can also turn on the control menu, which will just sit right next to our um, face here, our webcam, and then the recording countdown we can turn on and off. So this is where you set your settings for the recording you're gonna do. And every time this pops up, you wanna double check your settings so that you are good to record. Now we are ready to record. And at the end of this video, we're gonna discuss some best practices, but you'll wanna make sure that everything is set up before you begin to record, meaning you have your presentation open, or you have your documents open, you have other things closed. So those are just some best practices we'll talk about at the end. So we're gonna go ahead and press start recording now. And then we'll have a pop-up saying from our computer, hey, Lou wants access to share your screen. You're gonna click on the screen you wanna show. So I'm gonna record this screen. And then I'm gonna click share. Now we are ready to do our countdown here. So now we are recording. And while we're recording a few things, number one is my webcam where it is. I can grab that and move it around. I can also choose to make it medium or big size if I want, depending on what I'm doing. There are some tools hanging out to the right hand side here. So one is I can hide this menu and then I can open it as needed. The X here is going to have me st cancel my recording, okay, meaning it's not going to do anything with it. Pause is great. So if I'm speaking and then all of a sudden I hear a little knock on my door, I can pause it and then I can click resume to keep going. And then my check mark means I'm done. I've finished my video, go ahead and open it. Let me watch it back and get the link to share. So really simple icons here that make it easy to record. So you are going to, you can move about your screen, you can point things out. And then when you're done recording, you are going to hit that check button. So let's move into what happens next. So now that I've recorded in the top right, I already have the link to my video. So if I felt good about it and I was just sending out you know, some simple instructions, I could paste that right into an email right away if I wanted. But let's talk about some of the things you can do on this screen. Number one is you'll wanna play back your video to make sure that it sounds okay, looks okay. Down here at the bottom, I can change the name of my video. Okay, so if this one is a loom practice, I can title it there. I have some other tools here. I can download my video, which means I can have a copy saved to my computer that I can then upload to places like Edpuzzle or if Canvas Studio, if you have access to Canvas Studio. I can delete it. Um, there's also an organizational system. So if I go to loom.com, I can see all of my videos there. Or if I click my personal library, this will allow me to create folders to organize if I'd want. Our share button is right here. So this is how we can copy a link to it. We can copy a link to an image that's linked to it, which looks great in an email. We can get an embed code, and there's some other ways we can share that video out here. Now with premium, we also have the ability to trim our video. So this allows us to cut out various sections of it. So once we get here, we put the cursor where we want, or we can play. And then let's say I wanna cut out this little section here. I click start trimming, and then I decide how much I wanna trim. Um, kind of a tip with this, it can be a little difficult to get it exactly where you want it. I like pressing play and watching, and then I will write down on a little sheet of paper when I want to start my cut, when I want to end my cut, and then I just use this little button down here when I click start trimming to get the exact seconds of where I want to make that trim. So once you've made that trim, you're going to click remove, and then your video will you can click publish changes and then your video will process and remove that little section. This can take a little bit of time depending on the length of your video. So just be patient with it, knowing that it can take a little bit to process if you make a bunch of changes to it. So this is kind of the basic things you can do in here. The big thing next will be how do I share out my video? So let's walk through some steps with that. So one simple way is that if you have that link copied, and again, you can click it here to copy, you can also go to your share button and copy the link. You can just paste that link into Google Classroom, into Canvas, into email. Let me show you the cool thing about getting the linked GIF or clicking the share via email button. 
So when I click the linked gift and I copy it and I'm on an email and I paste it, what's cool is those who get my video, they're gonna see this little image play to preview the video and then they'll actually click and it will open the video for them to view, which is really awesome. Let's talk about some options quickly with Canvas. So with Canvas, we could of course copy the link, add the link to a module by clicking to add an external link or in a page. But one thing I like to do is embed. One of the awesome things about Canvas is that you can keep students inside of Canvas. They're not clicking to open in a new tab. I'm gonna go to embed and I'm gonna copy the code. I'm just using the responsive, meaning however big the size the screen for the students are, it's going to react to that and be as big as it needs to fill that screen. So on Canvas, I'm in the new, we have the new rich content editor here. There's actually a couple ways to do this. One way is you use your drop down on your media recorder and you go to upload or record media. And then you just jump over to embed and you paste that embed code there. And once I click submit, it's gonna fill it in there. The other option would be to go down and look for that HTML, switch to the HTML editor, click that, paste it, click back to see it. And then you can also include with this video text or other things before or after the video just to get students centered in what they need. If you want this to be smaller, you can go back to the Loom practice and you can do a fixed size and play around with the size there to get it how you want it to look inside of Canvas. The other option is to go out to Google Classroom. For Google Classroom, what I would do is just click that copy link button and then on Classroom, I can add it as a link here. So I could go in and add it to the bottom. Or as I'm typing instructions, I could also put the link right in here. So I could say, click here to watch our intro video. And then when I click Post, that link will be live. So students could either click to watch here or click the link to watch here. So you have a couple options on sharing that. So those were a few ways you can share out using Loom. Let's now talk about some best practices with screen recording. And this is not just for Loom, this is for any screen recording tool that you use. So number one is to come with a plan. Make sure you create an outline and do some practice. You're shooting for no more than 10 or 15 minutes, or if it's something longer, think about how you can chunk it into several Loom videos. When you start your video, also plan to introduce and go kind of talk about what you're gonna cover. That way, think about objectives. Students can know and prepare for the information that's going to come ahead. You also wanna end with a summary of what was discussed in the video. Setting up your Loom and your workspace. Your Loom space, you wanna make sure you have the tabs open that you need hide any other tabs that you don't. You want to decide if you're gonna record just that one tab as we discussed, or if you wanna do your whole desktop. Plan on showing yourself at some point. That's always good for engagement to show your face. And then your actual physical environment. You're looking for a quiet place. You're thinking about sound. You're thinking about lighting as well. If you have an external mic you can plug in, those are awesome. They usually do a little bit better job of picking up sound. And if you are recording your webcam, making sure you're in a well-lit room so that everyone can see your face. It's also a wonderful idea, and I've done this before, um, where I haven't practiced. Make sure you do a little practice and then listen back. Remember that if you have a microphone plugged in, you're gonna wanna unplug your microphone to listen back and then plug it back in when you're ready to record. This is just gonna make sure that your sound's recording and everything looks and sounds right. When it actually comes to recording, and you may laugh at this point because I'm bad at this, you wanna make sure you're speaking slowly. So thinking about that, pausing if you need to, and it's okay to mess up. Just like you are speaking in front of your students, when you're recording videos, you make mistakes. So in many cases, you can just correct yourself and move on. If you do need to use that trim feature, it is there for you in Loom. Zooming in and zooming out. Most computers, Chromebooks, Macs, allow you to use your pinch zoom. So zooming out and zooming in, or most computers will have a control and plus sign that allow you to zoom in as needed. So if you are showing details of how to do a procedure or something using technology, that is a great tool that's at your disposal. Again, I've said this once already, but don't be afraid to show your webcam. It's a great idea to show your face, to build engagement. You can move it around and remove it and bring it back as needed. Finally, sharing. Don't forget that once you have that link, you can share it out through email, Google Classroom, Canvas. You can download it, bring it to YouTube, bring it to Edpuzzle. If you have Canvas Studio, you can upload there and add, add engagement tools to it. 
So again, in this video, we talked about how to access Loom, make sure you're on the Pro account. You can check out the description for that link to fill out the form if you don't have the Pro account. We went through how to use the features of Loom. We talked about sharing. And finally, we ended with some best practices. Thanks for sticking around to learn a little bit about Loom.